Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja. And today I wanna to talk to you about male hormone imbalances. So for guys that have libido issues, they're exhausted, they have brain fog, they're not motivated, they get on the couch and they don't wanna do anything, um, they're irritable, like they're like the grumpy old man, and they just are not having a good go of it. And so what do they do? They go see their doctor, they tell their doctor, hey doc, I, I, I have problems with my libido, um, I don't get good arousal, and um, what can you do? So typically what they'll do is they'll give them some support in that direction, they'll probably give them some, some Viagra or some, uh, some type of support in that way, or they'll give you hormones. And yet, it doesn't fix the, the crux of the issue. It doesn't fix the fact that you're still exhausted, you're still burnt out, you still probably have arousal problems, you still have crashing in the middle of the day, you're still not motivated, you still have brain fog, you still have joint pains, and what's going on? So here's what I wanna do. I wanna to talk to you about male hormone imbalances as measured by a couple of things. So what we do is we measure the blood, we measure the urine, and we measure the saliva. So what I wanted to do is I sort of wrote down a case study. It's a 50-year-old male under high lot amounts of stress his whole life and um, he is in sort of fight or flight overwhelm. He's on a third shift, so his circadian rhythm, rhythm is messed up. Um, he has problems with performance and libido, and he has also taken hormones. And so what did we do? We did a Dutch test. The Dutch test is a four point or five point urine test that we look at the metabolites. And there's a couple of really key things that we saw. And most guys know this, they know, hey, my testosterone, it was in the middle of the road. For a 50 year old guy, he should be somewhere between 30 and 80. He was 46, so it wasn't too bad. But keep in mind, that's what he's urinating. When we looked at his blood test, his testosterone in his blood was really, really high. So what would that mean? Well, it means that in his blood bound to proteins, it's really, really high. And in the urine, it's coming out um, and it's not coming out as, as high as it is in, in the blood. And that could be because it's getting stored in the liver, it's not being utilized, um, and um, it's not being broken down properly, and there's just too much. You're yelling at a deaf person, expecting them to finally hear when the apparatus isn't working pretty well. The other thing we saw is, most guys know this is, they're aromatizing. So aromatization can be from alcohol, can be from insulin resistance, can be from obesity, could be from crappy diets, can be from stress and inflammation and infections. That's gonna cause him to aromatize. So the more testosterone he puts in his body, the more it converts into estrogen. That's another reason why that urine wasn't showing as much coming out because more estrogen was coming out. And we saw that on his, on his urine test. He had high E1, high E2, and high E3. And then guys will say, okay, I'm gonna take some dim because I think that will block the aromatized activity. It's not gonna block the aromatized activity. In his case, he was actually doing really well with clearing out estrogens, both phase one and phase two. Phase two is more of a genetic thing, methylation thing, B12, folate, folate not folic acid, having MTHFR, um, leafy green vegetables. Um, and if that's working well, you'll clear out those estrogens pretty good. And in his case, he was. Um, but what was happening, he was aromatizing. And there's certain things that we can do to stop the aromatizing, but mostly what we can do is we can work on the insulin, the blood sugar surges, the carbohydrates, the high stress, the third working job, um, and we can also look at alcohol and, and losing some weight and, and really you know trying to slow that down and not worry so much about here, take this aromatase inhibitor. So that was a big lesson as well. The other thing we saw is that his 5-alpha and his 5-beta was favoring 5-beta. What the heck does that mean? It means when he's breaking down his DHEA into androstenedione or etiocolonolone um, or androsterone, these are metabolites of testosterone. Um, when you go down the 5-alpha pathway, it's more androgenic. So you're going to get more oomph, more, more androgens out of that, more male sort of um, libido and aggression. Now, it, it's a fine line because if you get too much of that, then that's where we tend to have prostate problems. And we can have male pattern baldness and irritability and rage and anger. 
Um, so what happens is you'll get a lot of guys that are losing their hair and they'll go on finasteride or Propecia and they'll see that they're going down that five beta pathway and they're yelling at the cells louder by giving more testosterone. That testosterone is aromatizing going down estrogen pathways and they're going down a five beta because they had taken you know a, a male hair replace or hair supplement that helps with um, going down that beta pathway. So we got a lot of things going on there. Um, the other things that we saw um, was that his melatonin levels were really low and that would make sense. He's on a third working shift um, but also his B12 values weren't very well. He had a lot of methylation issues uh, along with the you know insulin resistance and the, and the carb eating. Um, that was causing some major problems with his melatonin production. His DHEA was elevated in his in his saliva, not in his urine, but in his saliva. Why wouldn't it have been elevated in his urine? It was aromatizing. Why was it elevated in his saliva? Because he was getting too much of it. And I asked him, hey, are you taking DHEA? Yeah, I'm taking DHEA and this. So you can't just pump, pump, pump more and more hormones if you're not fixing the body and getting healthy. The other thing we saw that his luteinizing hormone, so his pituitary hormone that helps with releasing your testosterone was high. So why was that? Well, he was older and perhaps he was getting some hypogonadism where he's not producing the same amounts. But that would also tell me that's a pituitary thing. He told me he had you know, a thyroid problem, he's had major infections, he has insulin resistance. And by force feeding that thyroid and, or sorry, that pituitary being pulled in so many directions, it's just an overwhelm. And, um, and the last thing that we saw was that his 11 beta HSD, I know I'm throwing out a lot of different um, names and numbers, watch this video again. His 11 beta HSD was upregulated. His cortisol was pretty good, it was in the middle of the road, it wasn't flatlined. His 24 hour free cortisol was good, what he had um, produced, um, what he has available. Um, so he, it wasn't that he was in a, a chronic HPA axis um, suppression where he's not producing any. Um, but what was happening was it, um, his 11 beta HSD was trying to wring out all the stored cortisone, the inactive, um, to get the active cortisol into the cell. So that, that tells me he's still under stress. He still has an unresolved inflammatory mechanism. And how did I also know that? Because he's aromatizing. So fix the aromatizing through inflammation control, insulin control, dietary control, lifestyle control, um, stop yelling at the cells by giving them more and more um, new, um, testosterone. Stop just trying to block the aromatized activity or giving dim to clear out estrogens. You need to look at all of the clinical picture. So anyways, hope you got a lot of information out of that. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja and I look forward to ending your male hormone imbalance nightmare. Thank you so much.